All right, so I was not planning to make this video at all, um, but I really felt led to, so I just wanted to share this all with you really fast. Um, but first, spoiler warning, huge fat spoiler warning. If you have not seen episode eight yet of season two of The Chosen and you want to, do not watch this video. Also, I am giving away this season one DVD set. If you would like this, all you have to do is like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll give it away at a thousand likes, and I'm giving it away because I really do just want to thank you for joining me for season two. And yeah, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to get into one thing that God showed me during this. And mm, like, that's, it's like you're tasting something good, like tasting see that the Lord is good, huh? No, um, but I loved this episode. And near the beginning, whenever the two men who we don't really know who they are, who are trying to buy the plot of the land are sitting together in the restaurant, I paused the TV, I looked at my family and I said, that's Judas right there. And I just knew it because I know how the Chosen likes to do things differently. And I knew how they might take a different approach to Judas and make him seem, well, I didn't know this, but I just, as soon as I saw him, I was like, that's Judas. You're going to try to make him seem nice. And then we're going to kind of get to know maybe why his heart rebelled against Jesus or whatever it was. But I just thought that was really cool. I'm going to go through some things real fast just kind of share with you a few things that God taught me. So first and foremost, I've been learning a lot about covenants. And in the beginning where they're talking about covenants, God just kind of was like, oh, that right there, write that down. And so I did. Um, and if you know who Kirk Cameron is, he's doing this thing called the American Campfire Revival whenever he's going through the American Covenant. And I was actually inspired to do something uh, like inspired by him on this channel. Um, but I just thought that was really cool. And right now I'm going through Nehemiah and there's a covenant in Nehemiah. So it's just another thing where I was like, hey, hey, point that out. And next thing is the salt. Whenever Jesus was talking to Matthew about the salt, I just love that. Okay, can I just say that plain and clearly? I loved that. The salt, here are the three words I got out of it. It preserves, it renews, and it heals. That is what we are called to be, not on our own, not without God, but God through us. And in a nation of broken people like you and like me, and like everyone else in the entire nation, we all need some salt and some salty people. Another thing that stood out to me is whenever they were passing out invitations, they went to many places. Mary, she went to some of the lower places. Jesus' mother. The next part that I loved, I'm going to dive into this for a little bit, was the introduction to the Sermon on the Mount. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake. Blessed are they, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. I accidentally added a blessed are they, but that's all right. One thing that I loved about that first and foremost the flashbacks i'm not a huge fan of flashbacks and tv shows but that really stood out to me because it allowed you to make the emotional connection in a way you could see where it had already been pre-established throughout the show and it allowed you to relate on it at a deeper level kind of rally up those emotions again from where we had watched it the first time um and then whenever jesus says if someone wants to find me those are the groups you should look for. And just like we talked about how we are all a nation of broken people, how you and I are each individually broken, how I'm flawed, you are flawed. The people that Jesus is pointing out, it's not the kings, it's not the multi-trillionaires. Well, God can use them because he can use anyone. The people that he points out, are those that are poor in spirit, those who mourn, those who are meek, 
those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, those who are merciful, pure in heart, peacemakers, and persecuted for righteousness' sakes. So tonight, if you take one thing away from one thing that God taught me, it's that even though we are broken, God can still use us. We just simply have to humble ourselves before him to allow him to use us. Even though we are broken, even though we are hurting, when we choose to bring that before God, He can use it. He can use it not only to glorify Him, but to give our lives a purpose. So tonight, I want to encourage you, be reliant on God. Surrender both your weaknesses and your strengths and see what he does with them. Thank you guys so much for watching. Um, again, if you want to get this, I'd love to give it away. Thousand likes, all I need to give this away. Um, comment, subscribe, and like, and you'll be entered. I'll see you guys next time. Adios. And hey, I'm actually going to break the chosen real fast. Dear Lord, thank you for the chosen. I pray as they enter into season three, Lord, and they continue to rest um, during this time period, Lord, but also as they are about to start working. Lord, I pray that you would continue to have your fingerprints all over it, Lord. I pray that you would strengthen the team, Lord. Um, and Lord, thank you for allowing us to watch this. Lord, thank you for preparing my heart and for preparing the heart of those that are watching with me right now. Lord. In your holy name, amen. One thing that I love about The Chosen is how it's not only a good show, but it inspires you to dig deeper into God's word and to draw nearer to God, which will allow you to draw, which will allow him to draw nearer to you, which will help you to be even more reliant on him. So my challenge for you, surrender to God. Both your words and your heart both your strengths and your weaknesses. And I'll see you guys next time. Adios.